Um, this is the front of the cabinet. You can see how many dents are in front from it being mercilessly thrown into the car in a short hurry as I'm being picked up for a ride. There's a nice dent here. There's marks all over it. Actually, I painted this, um, so it hasn't looked this good in a while. Um, I just keep on throwing, sand it down a little bit, throw a little more paint on it. Um, the handle is an old guitar strap and a piece of heater hose. Um, the wood on all the sides and bottom are um, were left over from um, my local community center. They were getting rid of it. And another piece of plywood from my friend's house. These speakers were sitting on my friend's porch for two years. Um, the feet I bought... Actually, four of them I bought, four of them I had. The cool thing is you could stand this thing up and uh, put a cup of coffee on top. This is a perfect size. You can sit on this outside. It's very comfortable to sit on, very sturdy. This is the back of the amplifier. The case itself is uh, I made and designed. Um, so, so there's a divider that goes up. It goes up the center, making it a stereo cabinet. Avoiding there's an electronics compartment behind this panel. Um, the, the port tubes themselves were a tool came in, so that's kind of recycled. This is an old whiteboard. Um, this is a leftover guitar guitar um, part. Um, an old oscilloscope knob. An old voltmeter from my from from my electric scooter. I don't know if you can see that. If I tilt it, you can. There we go. Um, the wire in this. A lot of it is used. Um, I bought this jack. I bought the potentiometer for this. Um, all the screws on the back are used. Um, the rest, they're stainless steel too. Um, this this uh, plywood is from my friend's attic. Because this was a prototype, everything just kind of fitted in here. Um, in this center, I have 19 volt um, lithium iron phosphate batteries. And to protect them, I don't want them to get damaged because this gets thrown around. So I have a piece of foam, and they're actually zip-tied right through the case. It actually works, worked out pretty good. Um, I didn't have a 3D printer then, and I just wanted them, you know, they have a little, it says a little bit of give. I just wanted them protected. Here you can see there's, this whole thing is shrink-wrapped, and um, there's actually a battery, battery management unit here. But still, I put a fuse even even though the lithium iron phosphate batteries are safer than lithium batteries you like you'd find in a laptop or lithium polymer batteries, I would not recommend building something like this without some kind of fuse. Um, not only for safety, but allows you to enter, keep work on the circuit while most of it's de-energized. And that's a great advantage. Um, I was servicing this recently. I threw you know, a little bit of paint on it and stuff so it wouldn't be so scary to, to, to my viewers. And um, it was a it was a convenience. If nothing else, it's a convenience having a fuse. And this is just an inline fuse holder. Um, I've got uh, the wires tied up because I don't like wires just flopping around. Over here, I have an old guitar effects unit. I've actually opened this up and I put in power wires and I put in the uh, um, probably uh, uh, at least one of the inputs and I, I uh, well, how I play guitar I just like setting this thing up and I close it for most people you can just put a guitar effect unit on the outside like a pedal or something like that but um, the amplifier which we'll get to wants uh, a line level input which a guitar unless you've gone through a pedal or something can't supply so you need something. If you're going to use some this kind of digital amplifier, you need generally need something to bring the voltage level up to line level, so it'll work. Um, there's actually a funny story behind this. Um, this is an old Korg Tone Works, and I was work I was modifying this, and I screwed up, like I do sometimes. And I blew out something on on the board, and I opened it up. I couldn't say anything wrong with it, but I could smell what I did. I could smell, you know, the acrid smell, and um, and actually, just by actually sniffing little parts of the board, I found out where the diode, two diodes, I had blown up two diodes, and I found them both, and I replaced them with um, with just discrete, um, I think they're um, I have uh, four thousand, you know, series diodes, just common, common like one amp diodes, and it's worked fine. Um, and so, like I said, I just basically keep. 
um, you know, the settings almost the same. Sometimes I tweak it, sometimes I don't. But basically, I just want this thing to work. Um, I, I, I don't play with a lot of distortion. Just a little reverb and a little, little, little something in the warm it up a little bit. But um, over here, let's see, let's slide this. Over here, this is a, this was from Parts Express. This is a Sure brand, 25, it's hard to show you, but um, this is a Sure brand 25 watt per channel um, digital amplifier. And this thing sips power. When you, when you hold the strings on the guitar, this thing is, the quiescent current is very low. Um, I was worried that, and I didn't have a oscilloscope then, but I was worried about um, whether or not my power from the batteries was stiff enough, but it seems to be plenty stiff. It might be a little bit better yet um, with a stiffening capacitor. I wouldn't go crazy because you don't want the capacitors to look like a short circuit to the battery before they get energized. Um, I'm, trying, I'm not sure how the i know these are 19 point something um volt um batteries i think they're um they might be uh they might be 2 amp hour i'm trying to remember but these batteries were from battery space and um and um not to plug anything for them but so far they've been good i'm i'm always i'm always leery um with batteries, but, um, you know, lithium batteries have a lot of energy. It's basically a little chemical reactor, and um, you have to be careful with them. I do not recommend building anything like this with just regular lithium batteries. I just don't. I think these batteries are safer. It's not to say they're perfectly safe. As a matter of fact, if you build something like this, as Mr. Carlson says, you do so at your own risk. If you short something out in here, it will catch. It, it will likely get hot enough to catch fire. The battery management you, unit might save you. This fuse might save you, but I wouldn't count on it, and I don't count on that. Um, I like my stuff to be safe, and as I said, well, I charge this up in the morning before I go. It usually takes like you know half an hour, and um, I don't sleep with it charging. Um, it does have a battery management unit, and it does have a fuse. I do have a lot of ventilation in here. Um, this is a digital amplifier. This thing, it gets warm, but it's still it's like 85, 85, 87 percent efficient, something like that. I'm not sure of the exact specs. This this um, this unit is actually from Parts Express. Um, this Sure unit has actually been very reliable. Um, like I said, two years, it's been banging around in car trunks. And um, I basically, I put this down and I roll it on the side on the other two feet. And it's plop, plop, plop. It's my coffee table. It's been out in the rain numerous times. Well, anyway, back to the amplifier. I use pretty, you know, this is 25 watts. I use, you know, you know, moderate, appropriately sized um, wire, maybe a little above um, what you would normally use. Um, I have another voltage regulator. Actually screwed to the heat sink here, um, because I don't run this thing always at full volume. So there's three, three, three of three millimeter um, uh, screws, actually drilled and tapped in the bottom of this, and I just put a voltage regulator down here to power the effect unit over here. Um, somewhere in line, actually, there's two capacitors in line to filter it, and um, I had to make a change. On this board because they only have phono phono inputs and there's no I'd have to drill holes in the outside of the case so rather words I put some pins I solder some headers into the board and ran the uh, the signals appropriately I just have kind of hinges here to uh, just bought some little hinges and um, I have some little um, some little plates epoxied in the case because um, I hadn't thought of doing nut search because I didn't think this is only a supposed to be a prototype. It wasn't supposed to work as well as it did, um, but it did work decently. And um, maybe this will give you ideas. You might check out. Um, I you know, I I don't I don't like plugging stuff. I'm not getting any compensated from them yet. But if they want to mail me a fat check, that's okay. Um, but um, like Parts Express has a lot of stuff. A lot of, a lot of these little amplifiers. And um, I just wanted to find kind of something that's moderately sized that doesn't have a fan on it, although the fans don't come on all the time. I didn't want to have to worry about that. Um, 
And once again, these are lithium iron phosphate batteries. These are not the lithium batteries from your laptop. They're not lithium polymer batteries from like a cell phone or something like that. These are more like the batteries that you would find in a DeWalt power tool. And they're kind of like they're basically all prob pro probably ripoffs of A123 batteries. You know, I guess their patent wasn't so strong. They're not doing that well. Last I checked, you know, but um, I think they were an MIT startup. But um, that's not to say this is totally safe. This is a one-off, this is a one-off high current um, uh, device, you know. And so, you know, you don't, you know, you don't charge it up while you're sleeping. Um, yeah, you don't charge it up while you're sleeping, definitely. And uh, I had plans on making um, my own distortion and reverb unit. And I was looking at uh, I was looking at spin chips and also um, uh, there's a reverb company um, um, called Accutronics and they make a little reverb module which would be good for this and so I want to experiment and um, I've also experimented with a Mark II but if I made a Mark III it, or I should say if I had bought the batteries a little bit bigger I would put a vacuum tube in this. But then you really have to be careful because you have so much heat and you've got to keep the batteries away from the tube. You don't want it, you don't want temp, you know you don't want heat to build up in here. And once again, this is a do it your own rest thing. So this is what's on the back panel. I have um, uh, an LED um, with current limiting resistor wired in. I've got um, a three-way switch in the center. It's totally off. Um, on the top, it's it's um, everything is on, and on the bottom, only this um, charging jack is hooked up. I've got a dual gain potentiometer here for volume control. Here I've got uh, this is the back of the of the power meter or voltmeter, I should say. Um, these were generic meters, uh, much like you'd find in eBay now, except for less of them are LCD. Excuse me, and. Um, they're actually set up by solder blobs, interestingly enough, and they're just a little, like a little uh, chip blob with, with uh, epoxy over it. Um, as you can see here, it's, I guess, CE certified. Anyway, over here to power, this just takes 9 volts, and I've got a voltage regulator just screwed right on here because this is kind of an improvisational thing. Um, I needed it to be dependable, but, I needed, but how it just came together was just one thing after another. Um, but, um, I've got a, a voltage regulator and two capacitors here to get to capacitors or 25 volt capacitors because the system is actually 19 volts and it hits up to 20 volts. And, um, here I've got an input jack here and over here I, ha I have a stereo, um, a stereo input with some fine stereo cable. And actually, I just changed this. I had I had this clipped on, but the, the cable management isn't you know perfect in this. But so this is what it looks like with the uh, the cord plugged in. You can see I've got nineteen. You can almost see but I've got nineteen point five volts. Uh, the level's probably up three quarters. Mm -hmm.